We've been going over this for an hour and a half. What we need to do is find Redfoot Key Listen, and get the hell out of here now. What we need to do is think. Think back. Somebody with power. Somebody who was capable of tracking us from New York to Los Angeles. Come on, Dean. What the hell are we doing here? We're waiting. Bye sit down. Now. S sit down. No. It's hot and I'm fucking bored. Mr. Hockney, do stay. Mr. Keaton. Mr. Fenster, I recognize from his mug shots, as well as Mr. McManus. I can only assume that you are Mr. Kint, the gentleman who disposed of Saul Berg. My employer sends his gratitude, a most unexpected benefit. I am Mr. Kobayashi. I have been asked by my employer to bring a proposal to you, gentlemen. What do you want? My employer requires your services, gentlemen. One job, one day's work, very dangerous. He does not expect all of you to live, but those of you who do will have $91 million to divide between you in any way you see fit. Who's your boss? I work for Kaiser Soze. Who's Kaiser Soze? Judging by the sudden change in mood, Mr. Kint, I feel sure the rest of your associates can tell you. I come with an offer directly from Mr. Soze. An order, actually. What do you mean, a an order? In 1981, Mr. Keaton, you participated in the hijacking of a truck in Buffalo, New York. The cargo was raw steel, steel which belonged to Mr. Soze and which was destined for Pakistan to be used in a nuclear reactor, a most profitable violation of UN regulations. You had no way of knowing this, Mr. Keaton, because the fellow shipping the steel was working for Mr. Soze without his knowledge. Earlier this year, Mr. Fenster and Mr. McManus hijacked a two-prop cargo flight out of Newark Airport. The plane was carrying gold and platinum wiring, also set for Pakistan. Two months ago, Mr. Hockney stole a truck carrying gun parts through Queens, gun parts which were set to be destroyed by the state of New York. They were to be lost in a way station and rerouted to Belfast. Again, Mr. Soze using pawns who had no knowledge. Which brings us to Mr. Kint. Nine months ago, one of Mr. Soze's less than intelligent couriers was taken in a complicated confidence scam by a cripple. He was relieved of $62,000. Now, it has taken us some time to find you. Our intention was to approach you after your apprehension in New York. You set up the lineup. Yes. You were not to be released until I had come to see you. It seems Mr. Keaton's attorney, Miss Finneran, was a little too effective in expediting his release. Holding the rest of you became a moot point. What about Redfoot? Mr. Redfoot knew nothing. Mr. Soze rarely works with the same people for very long, and they never know who they're working for. One cannot be betrayed if one has no people. So, why are you telling us? Because you have stolen from Mr. Soze, Mr. Fenster. All of you. That you did not know you stole from him is the only reason you are still alive. He feels you owe him. You will repay your debt. All right, fuck the debt and fuck you. How do we know you work for Soze? I don't think that is very relevant, Mr. Hockney. All five of you are responsible for the murder of Saul Berg and his bodyguards. And Mr. Redfoot can testify to your involvement, and we can see to it that he will. What's your point? The offer is this, gentlemen. Mr. Soze's primary interest is narcotics. He has been competing, shall we say, with a group of Argentinians for several years now. Competing with Mr. Soze has taken its toll. These Argentinians are negotiating the sale of $91 million in cocaine in three days' time. Needless to say, this purchase will revitalize the diminishing strength of their organization. Mr. Soze would like you to stop the deal. If you choose, you may wait until after the buy. Whatever money changes hands is yours. Mr. Soze would like you to get to the boat and destroy the cocaine on board. And then you will be free of your obligations to Mr. Soze. You give me one good reason why I shouldn't kill you right now. A gift from Mr. Soze. Good day. <laughs>